Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to move on and talk about the final property available to us on a flex container and that property is called align content. Now I think this one can be somewhat confusing because as we've seen in a previous video we also have align items and sometimes it's confusing to understand and to remember what the difference is between the two of them. So it's really my mission in this video to highlight the differences between them and to kind of show when you would use one over the other. So let's get going. So let's first just give a general overview of what Align Content is going to do for us. Align Content is concerned with distributing flex lines in the cross axis or across the cross axis. And when I say flex lines, that's a key thing to remember. And we're going to be diving into that deeper. But basically with align items, we were looking at distributing flex items within a flex line. With align content, we're looking at distributing those flex lines in the overall parent container. Now if you've been following with the previous video so far, you should be pretty familiar with this markup. In my HTML, I just have this parent div here. And within this parent div, I have four child divs, each with a class of child. And the parent div, by the way, has a class of parent. Now in my CSS, you can see those child div items here, which are each of these blue boxes, one, two, three, four. And that parent div is containing these four child item divs. This parent container div is also the one that has a display of flex. And right now these child item divs each have a width of 25%. So let's get started now getting our hands dirty with align content. Now I have to say that an absolute requirement for working with align content is that we need to have flex lines that are wrapping. So we need to have more than one line in a flex container. So as things stand right now, if we use align content, we're not going to see any result. It's not going to do anything for us. So we need to get some wrapping going on here. So let's say I come in here and instead of 25% for each of these child divs, I give each one of them a width of 50%. I saved and I still don't see any difference. And if you've seen the video on flex wrap, you should know that by default, flex wrap is set to no wrap. So no matter what width I give to the child divs, this flex line is simply not going to budge. So I'm going to come into my parent div container and I'm going to set flex wrap and give it a value of wrap. And let's save. And now we can see that we have two different lines. On the first line, we have one, two, and on the second line, we have three and four. Right, so each one of these is what I'm calling, or what is called, a flex line. Now before we go any further and start actually using align content, let me point out the values that we have available when we're using align content. And you should be happy to know that if you've seen my videos on justify content and align items, all these values are going to be familiar to you already. So that means that in this video, what we're really going to get to focus on is the concept of align content. Right, because we'll already know what these values are doing. So the default value for align content is stretch. And then as we've seen before, we have a flex start, flex end, and we have center. And then we have these values for spacing, which are space between, space around, and space evenly. So with that out of the way, let's start looking at align content and seeing what it does. Assuming that you've come from the previous video, which was on align items, I think it'd be best to start with an example using align items because we're going to use that to contrast with align content to really see the difference. So previously in the previous video, we just had all four of our child items aligned in a single row. We didn't have any wrapping going on. And that row that we had, we could look at that as being align. Now, since we set flex wrap to wrap, we have two lines, this one and this one. So let's see what happens now if I was to do align items and I gave it a value of flex start. And let's save. And notice what happened here. Each of the items in each line have aligned themselves to the top of that line because we set a value of flex start. So we see one, two up here on the very start of the cross axis for that line and three and four on the very start of where that line starts on the cross axis. We can also do, for example, center, and let's save. And again, we can see that the items in each line have aligned themselves to the center of that line. So with that out of the way, let's look at align content now, and we'll be able to see the difference here. 
So let's comment out align item center. And since we just looked at center, let's look at align content center. All right, and let's save. All right, and right there, you should very clearly see what the difference is between align items and align content. Because what's happened is that the content in each line has now aligned itself in the center of the overall container. So we're no longer concerned with the alignment in each line, but rather we're concerned with the content in each line and how that lines up in the container or the overall parent element. So let's go through some of these values now for line content. Let's look at flex start. Let's save. And you see the content for each of the lines has aligned itself to the start of the flex container. And since the cross axis is going here from top to bottom, this would be considered the flex start of the cross axis. We could do flex end. And as you might expect, all of the content has moved to the end of the cross axis. And as I said previously, the default for align content is stretch. But let's set it explicitly, just so we really understand. We'll give align content a value of stretch and we'll save. And we can see that even though the content for each of these lines is really just this text content here. Each of the items in each line is stretched to fill the available space in the line. So we've looked at align content stretch, the default. We've looked at flex start. We've seen flex end and we looked at center. And now there's three final values, which are those spacing values. So we had space between, space around, and space evenly. Let's start with space between. So we'll say align content, space between, and save. And notice what's happened. The content for each of the lines here has gone flush to the start of the cross axis here and flush to the end of the cross axis here. Space around on the other hand, let's try that one. Space around, save. And just like we saw with justify content, space around takes the remaining available space in the container and it apportions it like so. We have space around the content of the first line and the last line, and that space is half of the space in between the content. And then the final one is space evenly. And this one is simply meaning that we have an even amount of space or an equal amount of space between all of the content here. So hopefully with this video, you were able to really understand when you would use align content and understand what it does. I tried to make it clear by showing the difference between align content and align items. And fortunately, if you've already learned about justify content and align items, you should already be very familiar with the values available to align content. Stretch, flex start, flex end, center, space around, space between, and space evenly. So at this point, we've covered all of the different properties available to flex containers. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at the properties available to those flex child items within a container. So stay tuned.